Ground Zero, as many officials have described it, remains in Tennessee, the town of Mayfield and nearby areas. We want to bring in now CNN political commentator Scott Jennings. His father, Jeff Jennings, also with us. Jeff uh, on the phone. Uh, Jeff actually lost his home uh, in the nearby town of Dawson Springs, a tornado that hit that area. And Jeff, I, I, it's a pleasure to meet you. It's unfortunate that it's under these circumstances. I, I'd like to start with you. If you could just walk us through what you experienced from when you first learned that a tornado had touched down and that you had to seek cover. Yes. Thank you for having me on. Um, and I appreciate your words of condolences as far as our losses here. Um, I am a, wa a weather watcher. I watch weather every day. I like to know what's going on around me. And I had followed uh, the newscast on this storm for about two two hours or so. And uh, I was actually on the phone with a friend of mine across town. And when I realized the magnitude of this storm and it, that it was bearing down on Princeton, Kentucky, and then us, I actually went across town uh, and got in the basement with them. So I wasn't in my home when the storm hit. And when you saw what remained of your house, what ran through your mind? What was it like? Um, actually, of course, it was the next morning before I could get out there. Um, after the tornado came through, I did get in my vehicle and try to go across town. And uh, <clears throat> I could tell just, you know, just by what little I could see that night that it was going to be bad. But, you know, you see these things on TV where these big supercell storms come through. But until you see it in person, you can't realize the magnitude of the destruction. It's just, it's heartbreaking. And Scott, you, uh, having spoken with you yesterday morning, you were concerned because you were trying to reach out to family and, and you were able to get in, in contact with some folks, but others were, were hard to get a hold of. Looking at that video of Dawson Springs, your hometown where you grew up, how does that make you feel? Well, it, it uh... Uh, it's very emotional because uh, I've now seen a lot of pictures and uh, I've seen a lot of drone footage of the town. And I mean, it's essentially unrecognizable from what I remember, uh, you know, for so many years growing up there and graduating from high school there. Uh, as heartbreaking as it is to see it, uh, it's equally as uh, gratifying to hear my dad's voice uh, this morning and to know that, that he's okay. Uh, when I first heard the reports of Dawson Springs being uh, one of the hardest hit towns, of course, my mind was racing about him and other family and friends I have down there. So, um, you know, we thank God for, for dad's safety, although at the same time, uh, he and I have chatted and we certainly know there are some people in Dawson Springs who didn't make it. Uh, and I think they're still searching for people and I think we're gonna find out about that over the next uh, couple of days. And so knowing that there are other people that we've known our entire lives uh, who lost more than their homes is a, is a heartbreaking thing to know. Uh, just looking at the footage, and, and Dad's on the ground there, and I'm not, but just looking at the footage, it's it's hard to imagine how long it'll take to rebuild because of the widespread devastation in this town. There's so many homes. I was saying, uh, I was talking to Dad yesterday and uh, talking to some other folks, and it sounds like, Dad, our, our uh, house we grew up in is gone. It sounds like your mom and Dad's house that they grew up in and you grew up in is gone. And so uh, uh, it's a, it changes the character of a, you know, of a town to lose so much uh, so, so much uh, that, that lasted for so many decades. Yeah, it, it's sad to hear that folks that you uh, are familiar with may have perished in the storm, Scott. Uh, and obviously rebuilding is going to be a huge challenge. I'm wondering how you think people watching right now might be able to help places like Dawson Springs. Well, um, I think that uh, I think it's important to, to pay attention to what the uh, uh, the leadership says. Our governor, uh, who has family ties to Dawson Springs, uh, Andy Bashir, has said there's two things you can do right now. One is there's a relief fund, a unified relief fund that he is setting up through the state called TeamWKYReliefFund.KY.gov. 
And the other thing he advised was to give blood. And uh, I was uh, tweeting with some people last night about this, and the Red Cross actually chimed in and said, no matter where you are, you can give blood. There's a critical shortage. And so where, wherever you happen to be uh, uh, watching this broadcast, even if you're not in the area, you can go and give blood today, and that will help uh, the, the rescue efforts here. So teamwkyreliefund.ky.gov and go give blood, and, and uh, it sounds like those are the two most immediate and best things you can do to help these folks. And of course, the last thing you can do is, is pray for a relief and pray for the people who've lost folks and pray for people who've lost, uh, lost their homes and pray for a quick recovery and, uh, and uh, f for a relief from this suffering. Well, we've heard over and over from local officials about how resilient Kentuckians are, and this is certainly a, a, a moment where that kind of effort is needed, that kind of resilience and that kind of community uh, that you've described as being so tight-knit uh, will come together and rebuild stronger than before. Jeff Jennings, a, a pleasure to meet you, sir. Scott, always great to have you on. Thank you both for the time this morning. Thanks, Boris. Thanks, Dad.